What is going on, everybody? Thanks so much for joining us on a sick podcast collab. We're very excited when we get a chance to do these. And we're excited because Steelers Browns week is here. It's going to look a little different than we thought initially coming into the week. And we're going to talk about that with our sick podcast Browns host over here. He does an excellent job. Check him out, of course. Andy McNamara. Andy, what's going on, man? Have the tears dried up yet? Well, Mike, I'm telling you, man, if this show, if we wanted to do it uh, <laughs> yesterday morning, I swear, sipping the cup of coffee, and all of a sudden my phone starts lighting up. I'm like, Some, something's happened, okay? Um, and then all the Deshaun Watson is. I couldn't have done the show if it was yesterday. I couldn't have done it. To be honest, I was, I was just so miserable, shocked. I went through all the layers of like, I was like bargaining with, I don't even know what I was bargaining with, just all the grief layers. And now I'm left with fifth round rookie. Dorian Thompson Robinson for TJ Watt to put a bib on for and put some barbecue <laughs> sauce on Sunday. But I want to talk about that in a little bit more detail because from a Steelers perspective, right, our methodology to winning football games, you guys are probably aware by now, mm -hmm. is to run the rock, play great defense, and ensure that Kenny Pickett does not turn the ball over. He hasn't thrown an interception in a handful of games now. So – my initial reaction, and maybe yours too, when Watson was ruled out, was that P.J. Walker is going to come back in and play. He's got more experience. He's probably, I would assume, uh, less turnover prone. So, so why DTR and not P.J. Walker? So this is what we've been able to, my contacts in Cleveland, the reporters that I know and all that are kind of on the ground, um, have, don't like the decision, uh, but have surmised this. P.J. Walker, despite winning big games, right? You beat San Francisco when San Francisco was cool, and that was something. But one touchdown, five interceptions. P.J. Walker, yep. he doesn't get necessarily frazzled like a raw rookie, but he also um, makes mistakes. And he shows why he is, you know, his career highlight is really the XFL MVP. Uh, it just, you don't want to put too much on him. So now you say, okay, well, why Dorian Thompson Robinson? And apparently last week at practice when the Browns were getting ready for the Ravens, uh, Dorian was playing on the, the practice squad uh, pretending to be Lamar Jackson, and they were very impressed. Remember, his one start, he had zero touchdowns, three interceptions, was running backwards. It was horrific. The reason they say the Browns as to why is because he found out 90 minutes before kickoff when Deshaun Watson's like, that shoulder's not going to cut it today. And they're like, hey, bud, you're playing the Ravens. And he's just, what? And he just freaked out. He freaked out. So now he's got a full week with the starters. They draft him for a reason. They believe in him. The, ta the upside talent is there. I just wish it was against uh, someone like Arizona and not the Steelers' defense. Fair enough. You guys are watching the Sick Podcast collab. I'm Mike Nicastro from Steelers Crazy. That is none other than Andy McNamara. I have to admit, I'm a big DTR fan. I like staying up watching West Coast college football. <laughs> I watched him at UCLA. The guy was there for 38 years. Uh, he played under under Chip Kelly, so he had some of that pro yeah. style in, in his game a little bit. He played the Pitt Panthers, our hometown team, in the Sun Bowl last year. So watch oh. that game as well. Interesting nugget for you. Okay. This guy has a lot of upside, right? At preseason, he balled out. I remember the yeah. Hall of Fame game, watching yeah. him uh, against the Jets. It was maybe the Jets, I think. Um, yes, looked fantastic. All right, give me one to ten confidence level in him moving forward. Okay, I I have to go with if I'm using my foot just football brain here, I have to say like you know like like two for this week, right? Because from only from what we've saw, my fandom side says, well, we take those reasons that I just outlined. He didn't. He's a rookie. He found out ninety minutes before you're playing the Ravens, and he was not ready at all. He said. In, uh, to the media this week, he's like, look, I'm going to be better. I'm ready. He was embarrassed. Browns were embarrassed. Andrew Barry, the GM for the Browns, drafted this guy. They're going to give him a chance over P.J. Walker. You draft him for a reason because, in part, I think you also want to see, okay, do we need to draft another developmental quarterback if DTR isn't the guy? I love the skill set. You're right, Mike. He looked great in preseason. But we know the defenses are vanilla then. I'm willing to give him a pass and just to see what happens on at, at, in this Steelers game. The difference, too, in that game was Kevin Stefanski failed his quarterback. I don't blame DTR in that Ravens game. Stefanski ran the same playbook that he had Deshaun Watson do. They were doing flea flickers, tosses. 
You got to keep it simple, just like you were saying with Kenny Pickett. Keep it simple. You got a great running back group in Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. The, the uh, offensive line, despite all the injuries, Dewan Jones was back in practice, the right rookie right tackle for the Browns this week or today. Um, the offensive line's done really well. I think it's almost the same game plan here, Mike, for both teams. Run the ball. Don't turn the ball over. And I think we could come down to this one. Whoever turns the ball over less and maybe has the ball last to kick a field goal. This is going to be, I think, low scoring. I'm going to have you flip the questions to me in a second here because I mm -hmm. like doing that. We got a true collab going yeah. on here. But I, it seems like you guys are a little bit irked by Kevin Stefanski. Is that is that fair to say? Kind of, you know, where, where does he stand in terms of n not just you, but maybe Browns fans in terms of, I don't know, his future? Yeah, like, here's the thing. It, and it, it was funny because it, it goes back and forth and it actually went back and forth in the same game for Baltimore this week. Going into halftime. OK, you could try a 60 yard field goal with Dustin Hopkins, who's been red hot. Maybe he makes it, maybe he doesn't 50 percent. Instead, you put in P.J. Walker because Deshaun was uh, banged up to throw a Hail Mary, which what's the percentage on that? You know, there's like three Hail Mary catches caught a year in the NFL and it came up short and it looked it looked terrible. So by then I'm like, I'm like, what's with this guy? But then coming out of the second half, him and Watson, they collaborated, they went, they 14 completions in a row, didn't miss a pass, ran the ball. So now I'm thinking, okay, now we believe in Stefanski. Very back and forth. Overall, I think he's had a great year coaching from all he's had to put up with. My problem comes when it's real close. When it's real close, he has come up with some odd decisions. Has he learned from the first time he put DTR in to simplify to other situations this year? If he keeps things simple and doesn't get all pass-happy crazy when the game's on the line... I think he should be getting a contract extension after this year and, and move yeah. ahead. Interesting, interesting. I know you and I are both football nerds. You brought up Hail Marys being so rare, and immediately my mind went to P.J. Walker threw a Hail Mary last year, an insane one to D.J. Moore where they tied the yeah. game at the end of the game for the Falcons. I don't know if you remember that at all. It made right. me laugh a little bit, but right. you're right. Yeah. Uh, one in a 1,000 for sure right there. I'm going to have you flip it to me, and then we'll give some predictions. Yeah. Okay. So for you guys, what a lot of Browns fans want to know is, and you, you laid it out a bit on how you're winning, but with Kenny Pickett, and if you just look at the stats, right, the pedestrian passing numbers, it drives us Browns fans crazy. It's like, how the bleep do you guys keep winning with Kenny Pickett, presumably from afar, being so ordinary? So is, is it like you said, is it just keeping it simple? Is it, I'll give the guy credit. Okay. When it comes down to it and you need that last, that one play, He's coming up more often than not to get you that one play, I think, right? Yeah, and listen, your guess is as good as mine and ours <laughs> uh, because we've pulled some rabbits out of hats, no question yeah. about it. A lot of credit goes to Mike Tomlin. Yeah, yeah. His record in one-score games over you know the, his career is supreme. It's absolutely – it's like 43 and 22 or something like that. So his ability to make adjustments, obviously, throughout is, is critical – what we do is we play this chicken of the egg game in Pittsburgh a lot with our offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, who nobody likes. Nobody he likes is, him. <laughs> nobody likes him, right? This guy is unfortunately like the butt of every joke in Pittsburgh. Why is he still there? Is he a Tomlin guy? Like, is Tomlin his butt? Tom, like, what's the... Tom, they are. No, they are. Uh, mm -hmm. Canada recruited his son to play college football. Oh. And that's why a lot of people think he's, he's you know, still retaining this position, which which makes sense, right, when you, when you think about it in that context. Um, but it's that chicken of the egg game, right? And then, you know, some people actually think it's the other side, is that it's less likely, but Pickett maybe is so restricted in his ability that he makes – Canada looked inept. I think it's a combo of both. I really, mm -hmm. I really do. Um, I think, unfortunately, Kenny Pickett has regressed. I think he has a lower ceiling, of course, than than most. But a lot of people said that coming out. Mm -hmm. um, he does get credit. He's been a maestro in the fourth quarter. He is, does not turn the ball over. However, our fear is sure he can win games against the Titans. He can win games against the Packers last week. He can beat DTR. But he's not going to beat Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he's not yeah. going to. He's not going to beat Joe Burrow in two weeks if that Bengals team is healthy. So there are definitely a, a lot of a lot of concerns surrounding him, and we're just ultimately not sure if he's the guy long term. I'll tell you what, he's going to be the guy for the next two years at least. Play out his contract because the Steelers yeah. are too prideful. They put too much into into Kenny Pickett. So I don't know. Maybe a light switch flips on. 
I guess people always are like, look at Trevor Lawrence stats. Look at Josh Allen's his first year. Uh, I don't think he has a ceiling, of, of course. So, um, And to just answer your first question really quickly before we get some predictions, opportunistic defense. That's been the reason. Yeah. You saw it in week two. You saw it in week two. Two defensive touchdowns, Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt at the end against Deshaun Watson. It's the only reason we beat you guys. So that that's the reason they're they're six and three. I got a question for you on the running backs too. J- and, and my fantasy football mind goes to this. I love me some Jalen Warren, man, especially the value where you could have got him. Is he is this a now with Najee Harris? So I feel I feel Najee Harris just kind of he just he just plateaued. And Jalen Warren's the more effective, more dynamic back, but maybe not a three down back. Is this a true committee in Pittsburgh? Do you see that changing or is this like a, you know, you kind of go back and forth with them? Yeah, I think it goes back a little bit to the Steelers being uh, more, you know, prideful, not wanting to admit maybe that they shouldn't use a first round pick on Najee Harris because the eye test, the, the stats, the advanced metrics tells you that Jalen Warren is a better player. Yeah. Um, I don't think Najee is necessarily bad. I just think he gets a tough, he gets the bust label because he's a first round pick. Mm-hmm. If this guy's a fourth round pick. You're like, you know, Steelers have Fine. a pretty good running back on their hands, right? right? Um, I think we're still going to see a committee. There's no way Warren has taken 90% of the snaps. You're going to see 50-50 the rest of the way because Tomlin loves Najee, and he has done some good things when the offensive line has been decent. Um, and I, I would uh, be careful on your fantasy team because they're going to stick 50-50 split. And we love Jalen Warren, too, for what it's worth. Catch yeah. him on the Steelers' crazy, sick podcast. Glad you shouted him out. There you go. <laughs> yeah. What do you got? What do you got this Sunday? You, you winning or are you losing? Look, I, I, I guess I'm predicting 13-10 Steelers win. I think it's going to be ugly. I would the under the uh, over under right now is at 33 and a half total points. I think you take the under. I don't know how Vegas has the Browns as a one point favorite. I don't. I don't get it. Maybe Vegas knows something. I hope they do. But I predict 13-10 ugly field goal game. Um, I think it'll be close. And you know what? I just want to see if DTR doesn't turn the ball over. Give me a clean game. Don't be running back 15 yards and getting sacked. Don't be stupid. If you give that, I can have a little bit of confidence Then maybe we can build for it. But I see I see this one score game, last second field goal by uh, by uh, Boswell and, uh, and book it there. So close at the end of the day, for sure. I was full on the Browns until I heard the Deshaun Watson news. Yeah, I picked the Steelers to lose this game at the beginning of the season. I had them losing the next two at Cleveland, at Cincinnati. Tour of Ohio won't be easy. Mm-hmm. I have changed that because of DTR, and I still think it's going to be close as well because your defense is phenomenal. Your run game is, is great, even without Chubb, Hunt, and Ford are crushing it. So I am going to go 17-16 Steelers, and that puts you right on that 33 number, interestingly enough. Ah. So maybe, only because I think we might have some defensive touchdowns. Uh, you know what? Know I, that could be. I, I think it really comes down to who turns over the ball less and, you know, probably, again, if it's that close, who has the ball last? Like, the Browns came back. They got all the confidence just overall from coming back from the Ravens there. But then you take the, the Deshaun Watson part out of it. So it's going to be – I think it's going to be a, a really interesting close game. We know they usually are, and they're hard-hitting. So um, I think it really comes down to the turnover battle. But this is uh, this is, this is is uh, going to be very interesting, especially if the Bengals win tonight on Thursday night. Battle football. for first place. Battle for right? play. So that's that's going to be fa- it's going to be a great game tonight to follow and and then Sunday, man. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I won't say good luck, but you're one of the few Steeler fans I do like. So <laughs> all, all great stuff here today. Going to be a great game. It was a great podcast today, Andy McNamara. Appreciate you, man. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. Yep, you got it. Good stuff there. Obviously, Steelers Nation. We have a uh, big game coming up this Sunday. If the Steelers get to seven and three, I, I read somewhere that their playoff percentages. You know all these. 538 advanced metrics now go up to about 80 percent uh so i would feel really good about that but i won't be surprised if they lose i won't be whatsoever this is still a a road game against a divisional opponent Uh, that's when you throw records out the window as they say so that will be interesting to watch that's going to be a great show i also want to mention we have a great show coming to you next tuesday okay in person you get to see the Jalen Warren show with us virtually every Tuesday this time go see Jalen Warren in person talking Steelers live it's going to be so much fun we appreciate Cafe Note for hosting us check them out okay 8070 Ohio River Boulevard we're not just going to have a live Jalen Warren interview we're going to have autograph Warren items giveaways 
right? We're going to have some chalk talk. You're going to get to ask Jalen Warren a question, a little Q&A action out there. And listen, there's some delicious food at Cafe Note and beer and other alcohol. It's a Thanksgiving week, you know, get your celebration started early. I know you're going to have extra family in town probably that week. So that's the time to go out, have a family event. You know, kids are welcome. Everybody should you know, at least check this out. Tell a friend to tell a friend. 20 bucks a ticket. That's not bad because you could likely go home raffling, winning a raffle of autographed items uh, worth over $20. Still get a show. Still get a chance to talk to quite literally a guy who is arguably the best offensive player on the Pittsburgh Steelers this year. Seriously. Him and George Pickens and Pickens hasn't done much the past two weeks. So what an opportunity there. We want to thank our sponsors too for enabling us, allowing us to do things like this. I'm going to start over here with the shirt I have on. That is Steel City Wheelhouse, where the bar is set. We always talk about them on Tuesday. They're absolutely awesome. Check out John and John. They'll get you right for the winter. Tires, of course, whatever you need. Tint, get you some new uh, windshield wipers. Where the bar is set, like I said, I have it right here on my shirt. Love rocking this. Make sure you go to SteelCityWheelhouse.com. And financing is available, which is terrific. Uh, You know, I don't just love this shirt. It's not my only favorite piece of apparel. This is one of my favorite pieces of apparel, too. Shop Yins. I want to shout out Taylor Perry. He's actually going to be at the show Tuesday, uh, reportedly. Uh, Hopefully, if you go out, you get a chance to meet him. He's going to be giving away some Shop Yins gift cards, and we're going to get some memorabilia autographed at Shop Yins. So beat him to the punch, okay? Go get yourself some Shop Yins stuff on the website, shopyins.com. Use the code SICK15 for 15% off your entire purchase. And like I said, go out to the Jalen Warren Show. Get yourself some Shop Yins gear, maybe for the family and friends. Get a gift card. Go on there and splurge. Perfect holiday gift. You're supporting the SICK Podcast Steelers Crazy. You're supporting Jalen Warren. You're supporting local business. You are supporting our sponsors. And you're going to get a chance to drink some alcohol, of course, at uh, uh, Cafe Note. Who knows? Might have Stonies on tap. You might have a BYOB situation over here as well. As I want to shout them out as well. We got our CBS receipt as sponsors who we couldn't do the show without. Don't settle for the run-of-the-mill mass-produced beer. You can have the best. Okay, Upgrade your beer game. Raise the standards. Taste the difference that Stoney's beer can deliver. Uh, absolutely delicious. And once again, perfect timing. What's better than family, food, and football? Beer. You need to add that to the list as well. So make sure you check out Stoney's. I just want to talk a little bit of Steelers news right now before I get into the end of the show and maybe talk about one more sponsor. Uh, Just came out a little bit ago if you're watching this Friday. Uh, Looks like Minka Fitzpatrick is going to miss the game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The star safety has not been around in a few weeks. Uh, It's a big loss, but probably less impactful in a game where you're going against a fifth-round rookie quarterback. So I, I totally understand that. If he has a questionable tag and potential of re-aggravating his injury, that you hold him out in this contest. Because if the Steelers get dominated in the back end uh, in terms of Dorian Robinson, Dorian Thompson Robinson passing all over again, them, they deserve to lose. Uh, anyways, because that nobody's predicting that whatsoever. So uh, that is important to mention. Deontay Johnson is back at practice, so it looks like they're going to get their full um, arsenal of weapons, which includes tight end Pat Fryermuth as well. He's one of the most underrated Steelers players to me in recent history. And I mean that. He's not a household name nationally whatsoever at the tight end position. This guy, his first two seasons, caught almost as many passes as any touchdown in NFL history. Not many people would know that stat. It's shocking. He had a chance this year, and he's not going to get there because of injury. If he caught over, I think it's 60 passes, that he would have been one of a handful of tight ends ever to catch over 60 passes in their first three seasons in the NFL. So there's a reason Kenny Pickett doesn't throw it over the middle much. There's a reason he has maybe struggled in the red zone and pretty much struggled everywhere, let's be honest. And a lot of that can be drawn back to the fact that Pat Fryermuth has not been available. So um, if he's out there and he's healthy, I expect to see a heavy dose of him. Yeah, he's not the best blocking uh, tight end in the world, but the Steelers seem to have figured some things out in terms of run blocking, mostly because of Broderick Jones and his ability to be inserted into the line at the perfect timing and just be absolutely dominant. Joey Porter Jr. has been great as well, so credit to the Steelers for these rookie draft picks. 
crushing it on that front. We'll see how they uh, get their first taste, really, of AFC North football. I know they played a – well, Joey Porter played against the Ravens, but not so much um, – Broderick Jones. I could be wrong there. Don't quote me. Uh, it's I had to just talk to a Browns guy. My mind is absolutely frazzled. Uh, but, of course, we'll have a, a huge impact on the outcome of that game. I mentioned I like the Steelers, and I think they need to win because I don't have much confidence in them going to Cincinnati the week after, even though the Bengals have not been up to par. That was a Super Bowl team two years ago. They were 20 seconds away from potentially being in overtime last year and playing for another Super Bowl. They still have the same core. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. If the Ravens beat them, and I know will be this will be aired a day late, so we'll, we'll find out if the Ravens did uh, at win. So if that outcome does happen, the Bengals are going to be pushed down a little bit more in the AFC North, which I, I think is is good for everybody, obviously, because they're, they're a Super Bowl contender in my mind, even if they sneak in as the last wild card spot. Okay, so want to remind you of two important things once more. Jalen Warren live show. Get your ass to Cafe No Tail. Let's have some fun. Support Jordan York. Get some delicious food. Drink some amazing beer. Get some Jalen Warren autograph stuff. It's going to be so much fun. And I do want to tell you guys about brushes and beans as well. Holidays coming up. You need to stay awake, right? It, <laughs> family can be exhausting. We all know that in a good way, right? We all get to hang out and you know, you were drinking beer, watching football. You got to stay awake. You don't see a lot of family all the time. So be on your A game. Don't be napping in the corner like my uncle used to do every time we'd see him on Thanksgiving. A way to do that is check out Brushes and Beans Cafe, 4550 William Penn Highway in Murraysville. JY is not with me today, but he would tell you he gets a double shot of espresso. And that gets him going because he's one of the hardest working men in show business. All right, I wish I could say that for myself. I, Andy McNamara definitely is on that short list too. Thank you so much for joining us for a Sick Podcast collab. It's been a lot of fun. Subscribe to the Sick Podcast Steelers Crazy. Go back and watch the Jalen Warren show. He had some amazing things to say this past week about the matchup against the Browns, his first 100-yard game. And obviously check out Andy's podcast too, part of the wonderful Sick Network. All right, until next Tuesday, live in person, the Jalen Warren Show. We'll be posting some highlights, but we want to see you in person. Uh, so next week, hope to do just that. Thanks, guys. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.